Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Joey Natto, and this is uh, another episode of The Breakdown. This time, I'm going to be breaking down my own song again called Stretch Limo featuring Urge, my boy out in Los Angeles. Shout out to Urge. We got a uh, song here that has a lot of components, as you can see. Um, if you heard the song, then you know like the highlight of the song, at least in my opinion, is the ending where it just sounds like it's like a whole band and orchestra is like all together and stuff like that. And it's um I'm gonna show you how I do all that. So let's dive into it. Um the way the beat starts is uh I create the suspense a little bit by just having the drums play. Then I have the subs come in. So if you can hear bass right now, you hear the 808. So what's going on here? Great question. Well, we got main drums here, and you see there's a lot of stuff, but all this stuff is muted. The only thing that's really playing is the, the snare and the kick. So... That's real, like... Drumming on a, a high school cafeteria table type of drum beat, you know. But what gives it movement and makes it really like sway is the hats. And they're just going back and forth. I do that a lot. Uh, you may, you're may you going to start to see that. You're going to see patterns to what I do. Let's see here. So, we got the hats going. So, I want to try to get this sounding a little better okay cool so we get the hats going and then we move on to the subs which is they have like a little weird high sound to them i don't think that really matters i was just looking for a good rumble that fit with the kick really well right there and then the drums just stop and then it comes in the pianos Here's a, a look at the chords that I played. Then you got a vocal effect right there, which I which is a, a very late addition I made to the beat. Um, so what is that vocal? It's actually, it was part of a, some kind of kit. So you could say I used the sample, but not really. So here, check it out. This is the, that's at 26, that's at 126, okay. This is what it sounded like originally. Well, actually, it didn't sound like that. It sounded like this. I heard that. I was like, you know what? Let me just do what I always do. Just find a big file of something and just chop it up into little teeny pieces. And then it just sounds... I don't know how I... I just took the little tail end and then I just put some echoes in it. Made it... Gave it that little telephony effect with the filter and stuff like that. Okay, moving on. There's a lot of stuff to cover. And the strings come in. The strings are right here. Yeah, let's see it. Uh, it says string section. I have a little compressor on it, and then I have a reverb. And a compressor on the strings as well. And those are the French horns, which I really like too. To give them a little more resonance, though, it's a it's a French horn mixed with a uh, with 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 some strings. So this is actually a combinator, which in reason means it's a whole bunch of um, instruments put into one. I just made sure to boost up the treble for it a little bit. Oh no, I took away the bass for it. Okay, either one kind of works. Uh, in my book, I'm not a master at mixing at all, so I just talk more about the creative process here. So, um, if my mixing techniques suck, then screw you. Alright, so after the horns go away, I come in with a big BAM! Where's the BAM? Where's the BAM? BAM! And that's exactly what it sounds like. It is what it sounds like. 
Yep. So it's just the drums working, the strings working. Woo. Gus, I love this beat. Then I got a bass line in there. This was in the hook too. So it's actually kind of electric-y sounding. I, I think on the track it kind of sounds a little bit more like an acoustic bass, but it's really kind of a, a grungy electric bass. I'm big on those rolls, like doo 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 doo, you know, like stuff like that. All that matters. All that matters. Pianos come back in. Then the strings come in, and then when the hook comes back in after this big transition sound. Big transition sound. Ooh. Got those dreamy little fantasy world flutes. I love this beat, man. I, if you haven't heard the song, man, you need to check it out. Even if it's just for the beat, I don't care. I love this song as a whole. And it's Urge's part. And I think Urge had a much better verse than me on this, but he's just moving along. Then everything dies out, putting just the flutes. And then I have a uh, one thing you probably don't notice is I have low piano chords, which work really well with flutes. It's all the same notes. It's all the same chords. I just uh, want to give it that dreamy kind of feel. Because this song is about dreaming. So, there's another build up in the hook. And then just for this little part, I put these extra snares. Did you hear that? That's the only time in the entire beat. Sometimes those little ear candy things just help the song move so much better. And then uh, dives, flute strings working together with the bass line. And then we break down to the beautiful ending. Alright, so what's going on here with the drums? So with the drums, um, as you can hear, I took out all the bass all the bass basically just left in the mids and this is a uh, just a random rim shot sound I found working with a different kick um, very 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 low level hi-hats just enough to give it that kind of movement it makes a big difference because without them it sounds like this Let's see So that's what's going on in the background there. I don't know if I introduce any new instruments here. So, okay, as a small little bass-ish, I took the flute noise and then I brought it way down. You don't know anyone that can play the flute that low. <laughs> then high piano chords. Big transition, and then <laughs> between high chords and string, uh, high piano chords and strings, which work well together. I'm sorry, this is what I want to show you. No, that's not it. Okay, this is coming from the French horn, but. Once it gets too high for a French horn sound, it turns into strings. That's the beauty of the combinator. You could have so many instruments in one. And then, uh, the high strings are everything, man. First times I heard high strings being used and noticed it as a, from a producer standpoint was in Stunt 101 by G-Unit. When I heard it in the hook, I was like, yo, that like makes a big difference in the hook. So, uh, this is a loop. This is a loop. Reason is actually really good with acoustic drum loops. 
So it's just a jazz funk type of loop, which is really kind of the driving force in this whole part. All right, sorry, where are we? Here come the trumpets. It's a staccato trumpet. Put a little delay on it, so it's kind of bouncing a little bit. Like dun, 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 dun. Reverb, EQ, take out the uh, low. So it doesn't sound as full. Cause I want it to sound kind of classical, kind of kind of vinyl-y a little bit. I got what I call the, a jogging synth. So it's all the same chords. See, throughout this whole song, it's all the same chords that I've been playing the whole time. This part gives it a little bit more momentum. So I got the jogging synth and the flutes working together. But all while that's going on, the strings are going off and it's just progressing. And you can hear the bass line too. Very important. In the car, it like really brings the feel. And it kind of just fades away. Just nice little smooth piano chords to end it. I think that's pretty much it, man. I think that's the breakdown of the beat um, altogether. I love this beat. If you haven't checked out the song, it's in the description link below. Leave comments um, saying what you think about it or whatever. Um, sorry, I wasn't trying to show my face there. I, wasn't, I was just, <laughs> I just got off of work. It's late. It's 1.18 a.m. where I am. But um, yeah, that's the beat breakdown. Thank you for watching. Not up.